Hello everyone. Thank you for joining this course on Rust programming language. And uh, my name is Kiran Naik and I'll be the instructor throughout this course. Okay, so now let's get started. So first we'll see a few interesting points about this programming language. And we'll also understand how this language is different from other programming languages out there. First of all, Rust is a systems programming language that is specifically designed for writing system level software. It was developed to be fast, efficient and reliable. That doesn't mean that it only shines in a system level task. Even people are using it for web development. So it is gaining traction on the web development side. And Rust is statically typed language, which means that the variable types are known at the time of compilation rather than runtime. That means the variable types will not be deduced during the runtime of the program, like for example, Python. So Rust is statically typed language. So this can lead to more efficient and predictable performance. Rust is a compiled language, which means that the source code must be translated into machine code before it can be executed. So just like C or C++. This is different from interpreter languages like Python, which are executed directly without the need for compilation. So when you compile the Rust program on Windows, let's say, you will get an application binary that is .exe file, which you can share with anyone uh, without installing any Rust or Rust related libraries. They must be able to execute that application binary. Rust emphasizes safety, concurrency, and memory management. Very important. It provides memory safety through a system of ownership and borrowing which helps prevent common programming errors like null point dereferencing, buffer overflowing, and memory leakage. And there are so many things you can avoid using some of the core features of the Rust like ownership and borrowing. And we will be understanding all these details in this course. Don't worry about these terminologies right now. So as we make a progress, we will get to know more about these features. And support for the object oriented programming. Rust actually doesn't have classes like C or Java. So, Rust actually supports object oriented programming through the use of structures, traits, and trait objects. You can even write a polymorphic code using a feature called trait objects. It doesn't have class syntax like you use in C or Java. Rust approach to object oriented programming is not as fully developed as traditional OOP languages like Java or C++, but it does provide enough features to implement common OOP design patterns. So now we'll understand how Rust is different from other programming languages. Now let's talk about how Rust is different from other programming languages, especially in terms of memory safety. Memory safety refers to the guarantee that a program will not cause undefined behavior or crashes due to invalid access to memory. Rust achieves this through a combination of features such as strict ownership model, automatic reference counting, and it has a borrow checker that ensures that the piece of memory can only be accessed by one part of the program at a time preventing common programming errors such as null data races and dangling pointer references. So we'll see uh, some examples to understand uh, memory safety and just to get a feel of how Rust is different from other programming languages like C. Now let me take you to the online compiler. So if you just type in Google uh, Rust Playground, you will get this online compiler. And for a time being, we will use this to write small code snippet and to understand some concepts of the Rust programming language. So later we can explore some of the IDEs like Microsoft Visual Code to write the Rust program using the package manager such as Cargo. So in this online IDE, as you can see, there is a small code snippet, which is a main function in Rust, which is pretty much similar to the main function of any other programming languages such as C or C++. So every Rust program actually begins with a main function, which is a starting point. Don't worry about how this function is written and what are these syntaxes, everything. So we will explore them later. 
The fourth line here is the variable declaration and definition, which is similar to, let's say, in C programming, like writing index is equal to 10. But the data type is actually inferred during compile time from the Rust compiler and all those things we'll see later. Don't worry about that. Just think that the value 10 is stored in some memory location, something like this. Let's say 0 cross 200 is the memory address or memory location. And in that memory location, 10 is stored. And we refer to this value 10 by the variable name x. x is a variable name. And after that, in the second line, we try to modify the value of x. So as I said, this is like x is equal to 10 in C. And this is like making x is equal to 15. In C, this is fine. I mean, it works. But it won't work in Rust. We'll see that now. After that, we are printing the value of x using a function or this is also called as macro because of this exclamation mark. So just think that this is a function to or a macro to print the value of x. And let's compile. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the compiler is not happy with this code. What it says is cannot assign twice to immutable variable x. So the meaning of this is by default x is immutable. That is to say it is a const variable in C. For example, in C to make x as const or constant or x as read-only data or read-only variable. So in C you could have used a const keyword like this const int x is equal to 10 and making x is equal to 15 is not allowed in C. But in C, you have to explicitly mention the constness using the const keyword. So that is actually reversed in Rust. In Rust, you see the variable is immutable or it shows the property of constness by default. That's why this is an illegal code in Rust. So now, how do we fix this? Now to fix this, you have to make or you have to explicitly mention that x is mutable by using a keyword mute, a -T. Now this is allowed, so this is a legal code and it compiles and prints the value of x, which is 15. So Rust has made this design choice to enforce immutability by default because it helps to write safer and more predictable code. So this makes it easier to uh, reason about the code and this also helps to reduce the chance of uh, introducing bugs. Because uh, by allowing mutability only when explicitly requested with a mute keyword, Rust helps uh, to catch problems at compile time itself before uh, they cause runtime errors due to unexpected mutations while executing the code. So this feature will surely help to write code with no bugs related to unexpected mutations.